Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Oxford University Press, OUP. They produce very, very useful books for us within the legal profession. And this particular book is on an area which I think will be of great uh, relevance to those in practice and certainly those advising clients. The book is called Liquidated Damages and Penalty Clauses. It's within basically the uh, law of contract and it's an area which I believe is very under misunderstood and under um, considered, if I can put it that way, by many practitioners and students. The book's been written by Roger Halson and Elizabeth and I have given the title of our book review the following, a short and succinct statement of great assistance to the practitioner. Let's have a look at the book first of all. Here it is. It's a very small book. It's a hardback. There's the spine. There's nothing on the back. Um, right at the back of the book is standard house style. You've got the uh, index at the back, which is by um, actual paragraph numbering rather than page numbering to, to try and find things. It's a relatively short uh, index, as you can see there. And then right at the back, you can actually the last page has a bit of paragraph numbering and a bit of footnoting. If we go to the front of the book. Likewise, there's the front page. It's a very small book, this one. It runs to about... Um, 200 pages. There's the blurb about the book and then there's a forward. The forward is always worth reading because it gives you some idea of what uh, purpose is be behind it and the forward has been written by uh, Lord Dyson who many of you will know. Then there's a preface by the author which runs on a little bit. There we go. And uh, then after that, you've got the contents section there. You've got a total of six chapters, then the index at the back. And uh, then you've got a short list of t uh, cases. All the usual suspects are there, I hasten to add, in terms of case law. Um, and then after that, you've got a very small table of legislation. And then you've got what I rather like is the uh, structure again. You've got the, the actual chapter heading. Then you've got a short index as to what is actually in the chapter running through. And then you can see where we go. You've got the paragraph numbering and then you've got quite detailed footnotes throughout to justify assertions made. Anyway, I'm very pleased with this book and I was delighted when OUP sent it to me for a review because I think it's an important one for us in practice, as I've said. What do I say then? Well, Roger Howsom's slim volume from OUP is probably the only current book in print which centres on liquidated damages and penalty clauses from the point of view of the practitioner. And it analyses, in, this is the quote, the common law jurisdiction to control stipulated damages clauses and the distinction between, un, uh, to, between enforceable liquidated damages clauses and unenforceable penalty clauses. And this, I think, if I can just deviate for a moment from the script, as it were, this is an area which has become much more important in the last couple of decades. When I first started studying law, which is nearly 50 years ago now, uh, it was a rather different approach and, frankly, a lot less complicated than it now is. But that's from the past. We're now looking at what we face today. Now, as Lord Dyson writes, it is a significant and much needed treatise on an important area of our law. The decision in the Cavendish case runs right through the book, says Dyson, with much case law being needed to work out the full effect and implications of that decision. And for all lawyers who seek a good working understanding of the ruling in the case of Cavendish, this book is for you. And Dyson concludes rightly that this invaluable book will be indispensable for all judges and practitioners who undertake that exercise. And Halson looks firstly at the historical origin of the control of these clauses, which gives us all some perspective on where we are today. And we feel, looking at this book, that the author does clear up some misunderstandings, which both undergraduates and practitioners uh, may hold. And I think, again, that is useful because, as I referred to uh, in earlier remarks, this is actually quite a complicated area. And I think it's, I still believe it's actually misunderstood, both in teaching and in, in the, the general picture of where they fall within specific um, substantive law issues. The author goes on to describe the current control 
of penalty clauses and their legal effect, uh, which again I think is very helpful. And the third part, to use the author's words, quote, critically examines the various rationales that have been proposed to justify their regulation. So you've got a little bit of jurisprudence coming into this, which I think is also helpful, because there's always a danger uh, with some of these areas of law as they expand. They get more and more technical and complex, and they, we begin to lose um, actually our audience, if you like, the people who are actually involved in um, creating and acting on these types of clauses. As a result, it makes, um, it makes the law much more difficult to understand. The uh, book finishes with a review of analogous provisions and how to avoid drafting contractual clauses that are rendered unenforceable by the penalty rule. And I think solicitors will uh, find that quite helpful as well. So all in all, a most refreshing statement for multiple audiences. And Halson's aim is to give us a work of great value, not just to the practitioner, but also the academic, um, because the approaches are investigated in several common law jurisdictions in addition to England and Wales. Let me conclude by saying that, that when I'm talking about these jurisdictions, they include, of course, the United States of America, Australia, New Zealand and Canada, or, of course, common law jurisdictions. What is particularly useful is that the author introduces principles developed in their distinct commercial law contexts. And I think, again, that's an important uh, priority for the book. An example given is shipping contracts to compare particular contractual settings. So, in our view, this OUP title is a most welcome short yet succinct statement on the law relating to liquidated damages and penalty clauses, and is, I think, of great value and assistance to the modern practitioner. So a big thank you to uh, the author, Roger Halson. And the publication date is cited at the 8th of March 2018, and it takes account of materials available to the end of December 2017. Let's just have a quick look at the book again. There it is, front, spine, nothing on the back. Just opening it in the middle, applying the test for a penalty, right in the middle. There we go. You see the structure of the book again. Paragraph numbering. This is actually um, chapter two, believe it or not. So it's quite a, um, quite a substantial amount of, of work in that chapter. You've got footnoting at the bottom there as well. As I said, there are only six chapters in total. Chapter three is uh, legal effects on penalty clauses. So all in all, I think a very, very important book for everybody. And as I say, I'm very grateful to everybody at OUP, of course, and to the author and all concerned in producing these books for us. You make our lives a great, great deal easier. And I thank you very much for doing so, because otherwise it would be really difficult to fathom some of the more intricate areas of this, this area of law. Thank you to all. Bye bye.